having a special guest on my channel, my very dear friend, Mary Widener, who it has a wonderful YouTube channel and is a great reader. And I'm very happy to have her here today. And Mary, welcome. Welcome to my channel. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. So um, I wanted to ask you right off the bat, um, how did you get started doing readings? Well, it's, it was kind of a culmination of about three events in my life that kind of led me to where I am now. Uh, the first one was I got sober. I went to rehab and got sober. Mm -hmm. I also broke my hip. I'll try to make this short. And I had a <laughs> near-death experience. <laughs> oh, my God. So I had a, um, those three things happened in a span of four months. Oh. So um, that kind of led me to where I am today. You know, I had a lot of time on my hands after... Um, two hip surgeries. I had a total hip replacement. So I started watching the uh, YouTube videos and just started getting into ascension and, um, you know, realizing that we're energy and getting into spirituality and angel card readings. So that's kind of how it all started. Well, how long ago was that? Um, I got sober August 7th, 2014. Wow. Um, yeah. yeah, almost seven years. So, um, but, you know, I, I always had an interest in angels. Um, sorry about the plane. It's taken off. It happens. Um, I always had an interest in spirituality, mediumship, angels, all of that. But, you know, when you're drinking alcohol, of course, that uh, lowers your ability to connect, right? So mm -hmm. once I got sober and I started connecting, you know, really through meditation which was part of my it's part of my program my daily practice you know I'm in a 12-step program so that kind of helped open things up for me yeah yeah that daily practice is really really important it's I I, I think it's really really important so yeah. is so at what point did you decide to start a YouTube channel what what told you I have to have a channel too um you know it was something I was guided to do I, I, I gained my um, master in Reiki. I became a Reiki master, started doing energy healing, energy work, you know, started ordering angel cards from Amazon and <laughs> um, watching those videos. And then I was really guided by my guides. Um, you know, I woke up one morning and the message was, people need to hear your voice. Your voice will awaken people. And I was like, well, I don't know what to say. I don't know what I'm doing. You know, I, I was, I felt completely like out of my element, but I just decided to go for it, you know, <laughs> and the first videos are, you know, absolutely terrible, but I just, you know, I took a leap of faith and dove in and, and I just, I get better with time. <laughs> and, and what year did you start your channel? Yikes. Um, Cause I know you had it when we were in Ecuador, you were already on then. Yeah, I think I started about three years ago. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I remember watching after after I met you in Ecuador. What year was that that we were in Ecuador? Is that 18? Is that 2017? 17, 2008, yeah. Something like that, yeah. yeah. 17 or 18. And yeah. I remember looking at your channel, and it. I agree with your guides. It was your voice. <laughs> and and, oh. and I'm I'm trained in, in the theater and in, and in vocal performance, and... I'm very acutely aware of how people sound, how they speak, their dialects. Not, no pressure here. No. <laughs> <laughs> but but I remember when I saw your first videos, just hearing your voice, I was like, wow, she's like talking from this well of knowledge that's coming from somewhere deep within the earth. It was very, <laughs> it was really profound. It really had an effect on me. It really did. Thank you. And, and not just because we had met in Ecuador, because like I said, I'm, I'm trained in these things. So when I'm looking at people doing this, I'm really usually looking with a pretty, a professional eye, but also a skeptical eye, because that's just me, Moon and Virgo. I'm uber skeptical and I work with <laughs> all the time. So, <laughs> but it, yeah, I really, I, your, your voice and the messages that you were bringing through, I was just like, wow. <laughs> So I oh, thank really, you. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoyed that. Wow. So what was the scariest or the hardest part about actually getting the channel going? 
it was really a fear that my family members would see my videos because um, they just weren't open. And, mm -hmm. you know, my, my sister is much more now. My daughter is much more now. But like my dad, I think he would be mortified. <laughs> so really just like, and people on this island, I, I was really in fear of people that knew me seeing the channel. Now I'm very open about it. I'm completely authentic. But in the beginning, I was, I was pretty nervous about that. But you're in Puerto Rico, right? So it was a... I am in Puerto Rico, but it's actually an island off the coast of Puerto Rico. Okay. Uh, it's a very small island called Culebra. And it's three miles by seven miles. That's how small it is. And there's only about 2,000 people here. Mm. So, yeah, I was pretty nervous. But, you know, as time went on and I, I gained more confidence, I became more open about it. And not just confidence in being able to speak publicly, but confidence in my own spirituality and, and my own truth and being able to project that truth. Yeah, I think a lot of people go through that worried that, you know, what are people going to think? Or even, even if you don't care what they think about what you're doing, they may judge you as a person and be like, you know, why does she think she can put that out there? Who does she think she is? I know a lot mm -hmm. of that, those feelings, because I've been doing this a very, very long time since I was a kid. And even, even as recently as maybe, I don't know, 10 years ago, I was still very worried about letting people know that knew me as a kid know that I'm doing this now really like out in the open it's 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 a really weird thing but I I think you know the planet is changing people are changing and they are more accepting and I guess as they get more accepting it's it's a little easier for us to kind of be out there with it and right. not worry as much but you know also a personal journey you know being able to just accept yourself and what you're doing Mm -hmm. All right. Now comes, it's been quite a journey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it sounds like it. My God. Um, now comes the big old question. So tell us about your, can you tell us about your uh, near death experience and how that changed your sure. life? <clears throat> sure. I'd be happy to. Um, it was, I came back from rehab in September, I think. Yeah. Anyway, I was, it, it, this happened about a week before Thanksgiving in 2014, and I was downstairs. I, I own and I run a guest house for tourists. I was downstairs in one of the guest rooms, and I was putting on brand new um, skirts to the bed. So I, had, I basically had this mattress like up on my head, and I was trying to get the skirt on the, under the mattress. And mm -hmm. it was new, and there was like a chemical smell, and I didn't think about it. And then all of a sudden... Um, you know, I, I started to feel allergic, basically. Mm. And my, my lungs closed up very quickly. I barely made it up the stairs. And, you know, I have a nebulizer, and, and I was able to kind of crawl through the kitchen door, and my husband saw me, and he immediately um, got the albuterol out of the refrigerator and put it in the nebulizer and handed it to me, but it was too late. My lungs had closed, and they weren't open enough to to take in the medicine. Normally I have epinephrine pens because this has happened to me before, but never to this extent. And, um, but I didn't have any, you know, it was a time when they raised the prices to like $200 for an EpiPen. So I didn't yeah. have any EpiPens. And um, I was taken to the clinic here. It's not a hospital. It's basically a very, um, it's a basic clinic. Mm -hmm. But they had epinephrine and, um, but I was down for about 11 minutes and I remember mm. leaving my body and it felt like I was going up in an elevator. So from my butt first, if you can <laughs> just picture that. And I felt myself, I could, I could see my body. I could see my husband. I saw people working on me. And then I, I felt myself rise out of the clinic and I could see the roof of the clinic and then trees and. And then I found myself in this kind of grayish, I, I don't know what to call it, um, but it was filled with uh, love and bliss and warmth. And it, it just, it was amazing. And I could see 360 degrees. I mean, I could see everything. I was, I was really surprised and I thought, wow, this is what death is. I'm, 
I'm dead, right? <laughs> and I could feel beings all around me. And then I went to um, seeing like flowers and trees and the most beautiful colors you could ever imagine. And I'm a painter and I, I, I cannot paint what I saw. It seemed as if everything was breathing, everything was alive. And um, I remember kind of, it's hard to describe, but you know how when ant, ants make ant hills? I don't know, the, the green grass, the, the mountain of this green grass suddenly morphed into like a tunnel and I felt myself going into this tunnel basically. And um, I, I know that I forgot a lot of what happened mm -hmm. and it seemed like I was there for hours, but I remember two messages I'm supposed to share that I came back with is um, love is all that matters and we are all one. So that's what I remembered. But at the time when I was there, I felt like I knew everything. Everything made total sense. Mm -hmm. It was like, and it was very freeing because I, I knew that whatever happened next, I mean, we're all going to be okay, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. um, and then when I was landed back in my body with basically a thud, I was really distraught. I didn't want to be back in my body. It felt really heavy like so heavy and I went through a, a period of depression I think for about three to six months what I was looking for was to try to get back there you know via meditation so trying anything I could do to get back there but it really showed me that you know we are all just consciousness you know we're all energy beings and we're we're consciousness but I felt my personality there the whole time. I, I felt like me the whole time, you know? Interesting. So. Oh my gosh. That's, that's an incredible that's, story. That's incredible. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's, I'm blown away. That's just an incredible experience. You know, so mm -hmm. where do you see things going? You know, I'm in a real transition. I'm going through a divorce, which I did not see coming. Um, it was my idea. And, but you know, I didn't see that three years ago. Yeah. Um, and it's painful, even though, you know, it's the right thing for both of you. Mm -hmm. It's still very painful. So because I'm going through a lot of um, changes, <laughs> I, I'm trying to stay present as present as I can in the moment and just um, trust that the universe has a plan for me. And, and I'm just following the guidance daily. I'm in fact, I was just um, on the phone with the printer. I did paint my own Oracle deck because going through this healing process of, you know, separation from my husband, I, I started to paint again and it's been very healing for me. But as, as I was painting, this deck just kind of organically came about. So that's, um, that's kind of the next step for me. I was doing retreats. I did four retreats here in Calabria. I don't know if I'll go back to that. It's a possibility. Um, but I'm just kind of going with the flow, so to speak. <laughs> wow, that's very cool. I can't wait to see that deck. Um, yeah, I can't either. <laughs> I'm tell me about the retreats. What were the retreats like? Um, I had about... It was between like eight and 10 um, guests that came in and I rented a beautiful home, you know, with a gorgeous view and pool and all that. I have a nice guest house here, but I can only accommodate about eight people. Mm -hmm. um, and I just taught them, you know, about all the different Claire's, you know, Claire audience, Claire cognizance, Claire um, basically taught them about um, connecting with spirit, connecting with their higher self crystals. I did an angel course. Um, I taught the Reiki, Reiki one and two, everyone became certified. And, and, you know, we also had fun. We went to the beach every day and um, it was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. I, I love teaching. I really love teaching. I think that's something I will continue to do. Yeah. Oh, that sounds, that sounds amazing. And it sounds mm -hmm. like they really got a lot for coming, you know? Mm -hmm. 
I like to think so. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like um, very full um, schedules, very, very full curriculum. Mm -hmm. Right. So let me ask you this. So over the years that you've been doing this, you've been doing this for quite a few years now. Um, how have your readings changed from when you started out to now? And, and can you describe the style of the types of readings and healings that you do? Hmm. Well, I'll start with the readings. Okay. <laughs> the readings, um, initially, I really, I really use the tarot and use the tarot cards with their specific meanings. I didn't trust myself as much as I should. You know, I think that trust comes from experience. Mm -hmm. And um, I had to learn how to remove my ego and my intellect and just put that aside. Because like, a message would come in and I think, well, that doesn't make sense, you know, and I would talk myself out of it and not even share it mm -hmm. with, with the person I was reading for, which was a complete disservice to them. But as, as I've been doing these readings, I'm, I'm still using the tarot and Oracle and angel cards, but um, it's more of just like a stepping stone and then spirit comes in and I'm really trusting what I'm getting. You know, I think a lot of times we don't trust our inner knowing. And, you know, I, have, I am clairvoyant, I am clairaudient, but I, I also am, have that inner knowing. And I just, now I just kind of just say whatever comes up because it's, I don't judge what comes up. Let's put it that way. You know what I mean? That's good. So, um, and I do, you know, a lot of times I'll have people who, they want a healing and a reading. So I'll do the healing first, uh, you know, and I can do this long distance. And then I, I pick up a lot during the healing and then I'll call them after the healing and just tell them what I got and then start from there. And then we'll, we'll morph that into a reading. So it's, it's really nice. So are you, do you do long distance Reiki for people? I do. And I, I don't call it Reiki anymore. Oh. I've kind of, I just call it energy healing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because I, I, I don't, I'm not, I don't conform to the Reiki symbols and all of that. I think that we all have this innate ability to heal ourselves and heal each other um, just with, you know, source energy. <laughs> sure. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just basically a vessel for source to come in. Um, but yeah. And I do, all of the work that I do, I, I used to have prices for everything. And um, I was nudged by spirit to offer all of my services for a heart-based donation. And some people would say, oh my gosh, are you crazy? <laughs> Don't you know your worth and, and that sort of thing. But you know, I found that this enables me to help everyone from all aspects of you know, financial wherever they are financially, right? So right. some people will pay me way more than I would have ever charged. And then others can only afford a little bit. So it kind of, it all works out. <laughs> and I, I just feel more comfortable with that. That's really amazing. That's good. Um, Thanks. So how do you think that your own journey in spirituality affects your readings, maybe earlier to now? You know, trust is the big thing, like I spoke, like I spoke of trusting myself, getting out of my own way, just allowing spirit to come in. I would say that that's, that's pretty much it. Well, that's all the questions that I have really, except for how do people get in touch with you so that they can get a healing and a reading from you? Uh, they can go to my website, the lighthousehealer.com. Or just send me an email. That's really the best way is, is to email me at the lighthouse healer at gmail.com. And I usually respond within 24 hours. I try to respond quickly. I do want to say that, you know, I do this because I love it. <laughs> I'm passionate about helping people. I'm passionate about being of service. And I think that comes from my program my 12 step program. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, YouTube can be difficult. 
-hmm. You know, if, if you pay attention to the numbers and you're not getting a lot of views, it can really affect you and make you feel like, you know, giving up, you know, because there's, there's people out there that have, you know, thousands and thousands of views. And I don't, I might get a hundred or 200 views, but I feel like if I'm helping those 100 or 200 people, that's okay with me. You know, I'm fine with it. Mm -hmm. um, but why I do this, I would say is, you know, I get a comment or an email from someone because I'm not doing it for the money. I'm not making much money on YouTube. I make like six bucks, <laughs> but it's those comments from people who say, you know, I was in a car accident two years ago and you helped me through a really difficult time. That's why I do it. And also to connect with like-minded people because, you know, I am on this island. There's, there's not, my tribe is not here. You know, I have some friends here, but the whole spirituality thing and ascension and, you know, this paradigm shift that we're going through, there's, there's some people that are getting it and kind of following me and um, asking for healings and help. But by and large, my tribe seems to be my YouTube people. <laughs> so um, I'm very grateful for them. And it's, it's really a rewarding experience. Yeah. And, and you're probably pulling them along on their journey too. You know, they're evolving, they're changing. Have you found that your audience has changed over the last few years? You know, I, I have to say when I, when I started doing, I used to do political tarot readings mm -hmm. and I, and I was nudged to do that. You know, I do everything as I'm guided. And I think that spirit was trying to bring in some people that, you know, were distraught over the political climate. And some of those people stuck with me and others, once I stopped doing the political readings, um, fell, fell off. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I could no longer do the political readings because I felt like I had expanded on a soul level. And if you want to be in, in the fifth dimension reality, you, you can't, you can't pick a side. <laughs> you have to come from a more, more neutral place, right? Mm -hmm. A place of love. And I could no longer do the political readings. So it really, um, you know, I was getting like 28,000 views. I was getting a lot of views. And my ego took a little hit, you know, when I stopped the political readings because my views went way down. But I realized that it was really the best decision for me. And um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I hear you. I'm happy not doing the political stuff. It's very fun. Yeah, because I know the universe has a plan and there's a reason all of this is happening. And we don't have to, you know, be in the minutia of the daily stuff that's going on it's it's very dense energy so i prefer to just you know stay in a higher vibration yeah i know <laughs> that if people are doing crappy things they're going to pay their price or is it is it even up to me to judge that they need to pay a price it's not even no me. not even up to me. it's not it's none of my business actually what happens right. to their soul <laughs> you know, it's just, exactly it's just whatever they're whatever they're doing it's, I'm staying in my lane. I'm staying in my yeah, lane. <laughs> yeah. There are a lot of readers who have just recently joined YouTube that are looking at things in a little bit higher way. Um, oh, yes. There's many good ones. Yeah. You know, it takes all kinds and it doesn't really affect us if somebody else is like doing great and has like a million views. There's that's one of the things that I love about YouTube is that there's room for everybody. There really that's is. That's right. There's really yeah. room for everybody. It's a very egalitarian system in a lot of ways. I mean, yeah, and not everyone's going to resonate with me, and not everyone's going to resonate with you. So yeah. you know, we're yeah. all here doing. You know, we're all here doing the work that we were sent here to do. Sent here to do. I, I feel like um, you know, it was kind of a contract thing that I was supposed to yeah. come and help to awaken people and be a light Absolutely. worker, and so we're all doing that in our own way, and. and Good. Yeah, it is really good. Would, is there anything that you would like to say to people before we close out this interview? Uh, no, just that I'm, I'm happy to be of service. If anyone needs healing or reading, just email me. And, um, and of course, I'm just happy to be here. And even if I affect one person a day, 
I'm good with that. Yeah. And the, and the people, when I get, when I get comments from my subscribers, I have to say, wow, they are really taking out of these videos, everything that I'm putting out. That's really, really cool. It really helps you to believe in humanity, you know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. Okay. Well, on that note, I'm going to end our interview portion and um thank you so much for joining me i really really i mean not only was it very cool just to reconnect really connect and have a conversation with you but i really appreciate you um allowing me to do this interview it's it's super cool very cool my pleasure thank you okay <laughs> all right thanks very much <laughs>